warmer brown tones for this next tier. Grabbing some purple still so that it still has a purple tinge to it, but slightly warmer than the previous layers, which were edging more towards the cooler end of the spectrum. Continuing my ragged tree line. actually doing some negative space around over here because what I started to envision just staring at my page here as things were drying was a paler set of foreground trees over here. So what I'm doing over in this side is edging my darks in around what would be the white or the paler tones of those branches. Blending out the base. Continuing with the tree line over here. Letting the colors bleed out into my liquid. In fact, wetting this further down. Darkening this side because I have a little bit of a disparity going on between this set as uh, from the initial batch of trees that I started on. I want things to integrate with each other better. And then trailing out some wispier branches and foliage over here so it's not so chunky. Because remember, as we're going closer and closer to the foreground, things need to be more detailed, sharper, less abstracted. So I'm being more careful about the shapes of my trees here. Taking my half inch flat, dilute version of what I just used and painting along the base over here. And I'm going to also add some green to things to spice up the foreground. Letting this all bloom wet and wet. Perhaps a little bit of this gold can come into play as well. And some of this pink shimmer.
I love the way how, with the way the paint dried over here, it ends up looking like, or at least in my mind, it looks like a mound of grass, this hilly mound. And so I'm going to emphasize that and turn that into an actuality. Taking the barest hint of what is there already. And I'm gonna mix some ochre shades with bright green. Some of this deep green as well. And these short little strokes to create grassy texture. Letting my strokes overlap each other. And since I worked from the top edge down, as I'm working down, the pigment on my brush is being used up, pigment and liquid, and so I end up getting this gradation. Same with this side. And I'm not making it an even dome. I'm letting variations seep in here. And my lines are not all parallel either. They bend and twist every which way, the way grass would. Although generally up and out, up and art. I'm also making sure not to get rid of all of that initial textured fuzz that I had here that gave me this impression. I'm letting that sit as the backdrop for my texture so that the texture just builds upon that and it becomes a much more layered and in-depth look. Next, I am going to create a tree on my hill. Starting with the trunk, blending the base of it down into my hill. Extending upwards into branches. Keeping my forward edge wet so that things, so that all of this blends one portion into the other. I don't want trunk block and then branch block and then base block. Instead, all of this is a single wet entity currently. And by leading edge, I mean the forward part of where I'm pushing further details. The place where I am focusing my current attention at, but also working back here to further blend it a little bit more and shape the base of that trunk. Darkening the upper portion of the tree, I'm taking some of that purpley blue that I used earlier for the far background.
creating the upper foliage of my tree. Dotting with water to keep things nice and wet. Pulling out the edges so that I get a more leafy look. Dotting with water when I think things are drying out to keep it moist because I'm not done with the wet and wet aspect of this. So I have to work quickly. Still shaping my tree, stepping back a little bit from this, well, leaning back a little bit so that I can see how the overall composition is, is looking and if it appeals to me. And I, I didn't like that very symmetrical tight look here, so I'm spreading out the branches a little bit to the side and having this trailing edge move off. Then while things are still wet, getting some of this gold and dropping that in there. I want some of that green, actually. I want some of that green. Letting it spread in that wet pigment. Trailing that wet paint off away from the tree so that we get more of this broken and softened look to the leaves. But mostly not touching that central wet area because I like that and I want to let the pigment spread and just do its thing and dry that way. Especially with all that metallic pigment in there that I dropped in, it's going to make that central part very sparkly and shiny, which will be fun when it dries. You have to be careful about where the wet paint areas are. I actually just dabbed my the side of my palm right over here in the grassy knoll. Fortunately, it didn't really do too much, or at least nothing that I I can't work with. <laughs> so it's it's fine. But that is something to be aware of in general when you're working is where are the wet areas and what should you avoid sticking your hand into because sometimes it's not so harmless of a, an effect. For example, if that was the face of a figure, it could get very strange looking to have a blotched part of it. But since this is all blotchy and verging on abstract, 
it's okay. Doesn't matter too much. Continuing that same sort of thing down into the grass, by same sort of thing, I mean what I was doing with the leaves in the tree, the foliage, I'm also continuing down into the shadow of the tree in the grass here, pulling outwards from the wet portions so that the fringe of it becomes defined by my brush strokes. 